video coming up of a Morton's neuroma injection, but for the fourth interspace. So technically, we'd refer to that as an Islands neuroma, I-S-L-E-N-S. Or at least I long thought, I mean, I've called them this for 20 odd years. I heard some senior American podiatrists refer to it as this and different from an Islands that we see at the base of the fifth. So this is from Neil's Disorder of the Foot, Islands. Or Islands, although there wasn't an original reference in this in this piece. So I thought, OK, let's find the original reference. Very nice paper from Larsen et al. And it's got one of my favourite horses in there, Steve Barrett, who's done an amazing amount of work around uh, local anaesthetic techniques and endoscopic techniques. A, a guy that I've followed for many years, I'm very impressed by him. And what he actually did, and this is a paper from he, well, Larsen et al. found that the original work was actually from Islin and what it actually said really quite nicely in his paper was that Islin who described the the um, osteochondritis or apophysitis at the base of the fifth met that we've long seen in teenage girls and and really described a bony deformity and then from there it's morphed into the fourth interspace neuroma being called Islin's so for the last 20 years I've been wrong it's Islin not Islin so there you go you live and learn Here's the screenshot from Larsen et al's paper showing that it is I-S-E-L-I-N, not Islen, as I'd long thought. But it seems that, uh, you know, including in Neil's uh, Common Foot Disorders, that's from the 8th edition, which was 2010, just a new edition out last year, 2020, um, that I'm not the only one who thought it was Islen's. But there you go, you live and learn. So having done the video, and you'll see in the video I've referred to it as Islen's, and was very schadenfreude, and look at me, don't I know best. I then thought, well, do you know what, guys? I'll go and find the original reference. I always say, Riley Rule 101 is always quote the original source. And guess what? I couldn't find it. And it's only when I found Larson's paper, which I've actually had a copy of for years, because I couldn't find Islands as a search term. So, OK, enough of that humble brag. Let's go and do the little video. My patient and I were just laughing off camera. So Claire has come back for another injection. Um, so this lady has had pain unusually in the fourth interspace. We have scanned it. There's not really anything that we've seen on a scan. But as we know, our Morton's neuroma we normally see in the third interspace. Um, uh, House is in the second. Hute is in the first. I've seen one. Joplin's medially, I've seen a few of those to be fair, but in the in the fourth interspace, it's in Islands. Not Islands as in osteochondritis base of the fifth, but Islens, I-S-L-E-N-S, -S, in the fourth interspace. So we've done some injections for Claire in the past and they've worked for quite a while. He keeps you comfortable, Claire, for about how long on average? About six weeks. Okay. About six weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay, she's, she's fibbing, it keeps her comfortable for months, but she gets confused. <laughs> she's not from around these parts. So we think... Um, there's a small neuroma in there. We're not able to see it on a scan, but we are able to give comfortable with the odd intercurrent injection. So Morton's neuroma type injection. Now I'm just pu pushing up to it. Now obviously I'm not going to leave my thumb there when I inject. Now I see that on some videos, but I'm really just looking to feel the anatomy. So I'm feeling metatarsal head, metatarsal head, and the injection is going to be a little bit distal to that. So Claire, it's going to be a scratch. Three, two, one, scratch. Now, if we find any kind of oohs and ahs, let me know. So I'm joysticking, holding that very lightly. Anything in there. Now, I used to, 10 years ago, particularly with the neuromas, really look for some point tenderness with the needle. And I don't do that now because I think the chance of causing a little bit of a nerve damage is significant if you look to scratch the needle. But more than that, since I've been ultrasounding some cases, you just find that the injectate really spreads about quite a bit so you don't need to it's going to it's going to move around um well a centimeter or two it's certainly going to find the neuroma how's that is that okay sometimes when we inject play when you actually feel the inject tape going in you can actually feel it out in the right area how did that feel is that comfortable yeah. so a little dressing on it's still being covid times we've had chats about covids and injections and and uh, at the moment, we're avoiding injecting people with cortisone two weeks before and two weeks after the vaccination. So Claire's got a driver. We don't let patients drive after an injection. Her husband's waiting for her in the car. 
Um, she's going to remain on light duties for the rest of the day. When you've had these before, have you had any flares afterwards? Have they been sore or have they been... It's sore for the first day or two. And then kind and of then kicks in. And down. And then what we're going to do with this young lady, because it's not her first injection, normally for a, a first injection I'd review you in six weeks' time, Claire, and just see how you're going on. But because you're a frequent flyer, we just keep you on the books now. And then you just give us a shout when you need another one. Okay. If that gets worse over time, or if we see it on a scan, or if the injections stop working, then we'll have a chat about surgical options. But for the moment, the odd injection, keep you comfortable, is a good plan. Thank you very much. Questions, what can I tell you? It works, Well, that makes me happy that you're happy. Thanks for the video, Claire. I'm going to turn that off now.